All the cool kids are reacting to things on YouTube, so I figured why not react to a few Masonic TikTok and YouTube shorts here on the channel. Welcome to the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry channel. I'm Maynard Edwards, 32nd degree KCCH, Scottish Rite Freemason. If you're a Freemason or you belong to one of our appendant organizations like Demolay or you're a Shriner or you're Eastern Star, Rainbow, Job's Daughters, Grotto, whatever it is you belong to, if you're associated with Masons or you just have a Mason that you love in your life, go ahead, drop a comment below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. Please share the video and absolutely subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out our Lost Media Archive. I guess I should mention that I am inside our beautiful executive chamber, which is where our Supreme Council meets. And if you click the link above, you can watch a video that'll give you a little tour of this room. But while I'm here, I've got my... Uh, trusty laptop and a bunch of videos ready to go. So we'll put them on screen for you to watch and I will uh, give you my reaction on all of these. Freemasons reject the Bible as the sole word of God. Notice I didn't say that all Freemasons reject the Bible. I said they reject it as the sole word of God. I'll be charitable and acknowledge that some Masons who are professing Christians might affirm that the Bible is the only holy book, but that is not true of the whole of Freemasonry. If you visit the Scottish Rite website right now, scottishrite.org, you will find these words She's got research. the Bible. Most likely this misconception is due to the holy book that sits on the altar in the middle of a Masonic lodge. This holy book does not have to be Christian like the Bible. Rather, it can be any holy book that is important to the members of the lodge. So what they just said was the Bible is not the only holy book. Freemasonry is inclusive of men of all faiths. So while as a Christian, I believe that the Holy Bible is the only word of God, a brother who is Muslim or who is of Jewish faith or who is of another faith altogether may not believe that exclusively. We as Masons, we go into our lodges, we put those differences aside. When I see things like this where people are critical of Masons for being inclusive of men of all faiths, I just wonder, where do you work? Do you not sit near someone at your job where they maybe don't believe exactly what you believe it must be a very difficult day for you to just I mean does your flesh peel when you're near someone who has a, a different faith do I personally as a Christian believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God absolutely but a man who is of Muslim faith or is, who is of Jewish faith obviously believes something different and as Freemasons yeah we are okay with that Masonic passport I peeked at this one. So I think what this guy, I, I couldn't tell if this was a pro Masonic video or an anti Masonic video, but either way, I want to explain what this is. So this is not something secret that Masons can use to go to secret places. This is something that a Mason would keep sort of as a record for the different lodges and different places that he would visit. So as a Mason, I have my home lodge, my, my lodge where I was made a Mason. And then there are other lodges in my area. You know, in the DC area, there's a couple of dozen. So let's say I belong to Lodge A, and then I go visit Lodge C. Well, when I go there, the master of the lodge and some of the brothers might want to sign my passport as sort of a record I was there. And it's a way to keep track of your travels. It's not some secret way to get in and out of secret countries or any nonsense like that. It's just a way for a, a Mason to keep track of his travels. And it's a lot of fun to, to, to do that. Some guys have a Masonic Bible that has a space in the front for different places that you can visit. Um, but, you know, that gets a little cumbersome to carry around. So uh, this little Masonic passport, go right in your jacket pocket and you can uh, keep track of the different lodges that you have traveled to. Oh, I peeked at this one too. I'm actually in this, so stop. This is a guy who is pretending he's uh, one of the Illuminati, which is not a thing anymore. And if you think it is, watch the video linked above. But he, he's put these pictures of Masons walking in parades and saying, you know, if you want to become one of us and be like these guys, uh, go ahead and click here and give me your money and I'll make you an Illuminati. This particular video that he put on TikTok actually has me in it, uh, not uh, on YouTube, but I was a member of the Grand Line of Maryland in uh, 2022. I was the Deputy Grand Marshal uh, with, the, uh, with the Grand Line, and this was a Christmas parade we were in, so let's go ahead and watch and I'll stop. It's my friend Wilson. 
There he is again. That's my buddy Josh right there and Wilson over his shoulder. Up, oh, stop right there, right there. That in the gentleman with the top hat on, that is my dear friend and brother. He was the Grandmaster of Masons 21 and 22. That is Brother Marlon L. Mills. To his left, that's my buddy Tommy. And then you see my smiling, handsome face right there behind me in my full regalia. Uh, it's, uh, so this guy actually has me in one of his videos, which was kind of cool. I was flattered. Oh, and he's, here's a Masonic dagger. And I don't know what that is. That must just be some stone Bible at, at a Grand Lodge somewhere or a cemetery or something. But um, yeah, so that guy, he's got a dozen videos exactly like that. They're just different slides of Masons doing random things, parades and stuff like that. And they're wearing their regalia. And, and he wants you to give him money and he'll let you walk in a parade. I got news for you. Pretty much any parade in America, if you pay like 50 bucks, you can go walk in it. They, they're they not real picky about who's in what parade. There's an American war hero buried underneath a busy New York City intersection right in front of the Flatiron Building. This is the obelisk dedicated to General William Worth who fought in the Mexican-American War and conquered all the way down to Mexico City. Yep, he's buried right underneath here. There's two other obelisks in New York City, right by St. Paul's in downtown Manhattan that's dedicated to Thomas Addis Emmett, the advocate for Irish independence and also a New York State Attorney General. And then there's another obelisk right behind the Metropolitan Museum Museum of Arts, Cleopatra's Needle, which was erected in 1881 and imported over from Egypt. Take out a map and there's something even more strange. You draw a straight line from the obelisk at St. Paul's all the way to Cleopatra's Needle and right in the middle perfectly is this obelisk. What's up with that? Cleopatra's Needle was installed by Freemasons. Thomas Addis Emmett, a Freemason, and General Worth, a Freemason. And one block away is the Freemason headquarters. Is it coincidence? Who knows? Stay curious, my friends. First of all, it's kind of cool. Uh, is it set up that way on purpose? Possibly. I, I don't know a whole lot about it. I'll be honest with you. I haven't ever done any research on it. I can't say this moment if either of those two folks are indeed Masons. I'll drop it right here if it is. Whoa. Is it possible that Masons on purpose lined those three obelisks up? I guess so. Uh, I, I don't know whether or not I believe it was that big a deal. And as far as it being a block away from the Grand Lodge of New York, I don't think the Grand Lodge of New York has always been in that same spot. So uh, I think this falls under the category of uh, the Grand Lodge being nearby is kind of a coincidence. The three obelisks being lined up I can't speak to whether or not it was intentional, and I'm certainly not willing to say it was Masonic. I'll give that a, a definite maybe. Okay. They have existed for thousands oh, and I thousands of years, hidden in the shadow of history. Some believe they are the descendants of the Knights Templar They're or not. the enigmatic order of Hashashin, but the origins of their craft remain say, shrouded say, in... Say that again? The enigmatic order of what? Hashashin, but the origins of... The but the origins of their craft or the enigmatic order of Hashashin, but the so origins of their craft now? remain shrouded in mystery. Some speculate their roots can be tracked back to the fabled Garden of Eden. Hashashin is where we get the word assassin, so they were basically contract killers. So Freemasons are now contract killers. Well, that's a that's a stretch. Passed down through generations, others go even further, suggesting that their knowledge was brought to us from beyond the stars, an ancient wisdom bestowed upon humanity. The Freemasons, an organization veiled in secrecy and symbolism, for centuries they have captured the imagination of scholars, conspiracy theorists, and curious minds alike. Through their intricate rituals and secret rites, they seek to unravel the mysteries of the universe and explore the depths of human potential. But what is it that makes them so intriguing? What truths lie hidden behind their closed doors? One thing's certain, in a world where nothing's really true, everything is possible. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, share and subscribe for more and check out my other content. God bless. God bless to you too as well, sir. Um, so these pictures here, uh, this is uh, the outside of the House of the Temple. That is um, power. 
the sphinx, one of the sphinxes out front. That is wisdom, the other sphinx out front. Uh, that's the facade of the building. I guess it's not really a facade. I guess it's just the front of the building since it's really the front. Um, the rest of these images all look like they have come from the inside of, I think that's the Grand Lodge of England and one of their lodge rooms there. I, I've never been there, so I wouldn't swear to it, but having seen many pictures of it, that sure looks like it. I don't know what his point is with this video other than masonry's been around a long time. Uh, tying us to the Knight Templar, that's old news. Everybody does that. I've never heard masons uh, attached to the uh, order of Hashashin before. Again, that's where we get the word assassin. Um, but... Uh, Okay. Have you ever seen someone oh, wow. who shortly after joining Freemasonry goes all in, eats and breathes Freemasonry with such a fury that you think nothing else matters in the world to them? If the Masonic journey was a race, they would be going against all prudent advice from experts. Make sure to take care of your body. Pace yourself. Don't ignore the signs of wear and tear, etc. Is Freemasonry good? Of course it is. Could it turn into something bad for you if you put it above all other things? I think you know the answer to that. Stay with me because I will share with you some real life examples and some tips to help you avoid Masonic burnout on this episode of The Winding Stairs. That is Brother Juan Sepulveda and he is an artist and he is a Freemason. He's got his own channel here on YouTube with uh, some other, uh, other brothers. And uh, he's legit. He's a, he's a good guy. I interviewed him once for the podcast a couple years ago. Uh, I do. I'm a fan. I enjoy his stuff. Um, he also uh, does a couple of other things. So I'm going to make sure we put all of his links below. Juan's a, Juan's a really smart guy. Uh, the, the thing that he's talking about here is called Masonic Burnout. A guy comes into the craft and suddenly you've got this whole new group of friends. There's all these cool things to learn. There's, uh, there's awards you can get. There's you know, different dinners and things and different groups you can join. And all of it is just so fun and interesting that before too long, you've sort of overcommitted yourself to all of these things. And it, it sucks up every waking minute of your life. Ask me how I know. And uh, it, it, it can become a negative. And, and then what will happen is a newer Mason will get burned out and just throw his hands up in the air and say, I can't do this anymore. It's too much. And he will sort of walk away. So a Masonic burnout is a very real thing. Um, and if you're a Mason, you're watching this, I highly recommend you checking out uh, Juan and the rest of the guys on his channels and, uh, and enjoy it. It's, uh, I'm a fan. So uh, do indeed check it out. So if you've got a Masonic or anti-Masonic video you want me to check out and react to, go ahead and drop the link below. Let me know what you think about some of these. I'm sure there are going to be all kinds of folks who have all kinds of things to say about my reactions. But Brother Masons, you did a great job on our last video helping me out and uh, jumping in here to support the cause and say what you thought and say what you were reacting to in that last video. So I want you to do it with this one as well. Drop your comments below, share the video, give us that thumbs up, turn on those notifications, and please do make sure you subscribe. I would appreciate if you would check out our Lost Media Archive. I'm Maynard Edwards. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you would like to learn more about Freemasonry, click the link above to visit beafreemason.org. It will answer all your questions about Freemasonry and help connect you with a lodge in your area. We would love it if you would subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up, of course. And if you're a Mason, not only do we want you to comment below, but we want you to help us support the Lost Media Archive. For only $2 a month, you can help us preserve Masonic history in the form of 20th century media. I'm talking about tapes, records, films, DVDs, VHS, you name it. We've got it in the archive and the ravages of time are not being kind. So for two bucks a month, you can help us preserve all of that and we're going to give you access to it as we digitize it. Click the link above to learn more.